So picture this, you have been given an assignment and you know you have to be submitting it next week. But to finish the assignment, it's absolutely important that you start it today since the assignment is really big. You come back home, sit down on your TV and think you're a little bit tired from the whole days of schoolwork. So you sit down to watch a YouTube video. You promise yourself you're going you're gonna to watch one YouTube video and then start studying. You finish one video and then you start watching the next. And the next. And the next. And finally when you watch the clock, eight hours have passed, the whole day is gone and you've not got done an inch of work. What's good YouTube? This is your boy Dr. Zizi and if you heard me right, yes, today we are going to be talking about procrastination, how to stop procrastinating while you're in medical school. To be honest, I have been a major procrastinator myself, guilty, but throughout the medical school journey, I have learned some tips and tricks that help me to improve myself so that I don't procrastinate in my skills anymore. So without further ado, let's go straight into the video and let me tell you about the five tips that will help you stop procrastinating today. Let's get into it. So the first thing that you need to do is take your assignment and make it into small chunks. Hmm, assignment. Make it into small chunks. No, don't tear your assignment up. Take the assignment, whatever that you have to do, and break it up into small pieces. So for example, what I used to do when I was studying for PLAB, I knew that I had to go through the 1700 questions. So I knew that I wanted to finish these questions, let's say within one month. So I took the 1700 questions, divided it by 30 since I wanted to finish within one month. That came up to around 56.6 questions. So I did almost around 60 questions per day. So every day, regardless of whatever I did, if I got through 60 questions, it meant that I was reaching my goal every single day. So that's the first thing you need to do. Make it into small chunk. The second thing that you need to do is plan a reward. <laughs> what? I'm on my break, okay? So it's important to plan rewards such as you know having a bar of chocolate once you're done studying or maybe visiting a friend or going to the gym or doing something that you love such as watching a TV. You would be working much more efficiently with the time that you've been allocated to study, giving in your 100% thereby finishing your work much more faster and the quality of work that you've done during that specific time would be much more better. Number three, remove distractions now this is really big you have to figure out what is the biggest thing that distracts you it's it's pretty simple when you are busy or supposed to be doing the work what is the first thing that you can what is the thing that you continuously doing if you are continuously cooking then probably you're using cooking as a distraction if you're continuously washing clothes then probably washing clothes is a distraction so you have to know what those distractions are sometimes they come in the form of chores as i explained so you have to make sure you get your chores done much earlier so you can give a specific time for me, my biggest distraction was YouTube. What I used to do is I used to sit down and I used to watch a video, sometimes a very educational video, mind you that. And I would just continue watching one video after another, one video, thinking that, you know, it's educational, I'm learning. But at the end of the day, I still have to do work that I'm supposed to be doing, which is an assignment for my school. And finally, it's been eight hours and I've still not got done any of the work done. So what I, what I did was, first thing I did was I actually put something called a YouTube blocker which prevented any of the feeds on my YouTube from popping so that way I'm not uh, distracted to go and click on a video. My YouTube would be blank. That way I could only type in the videos that I want to use, such as medical, whatever the videos I want to study for. And thus doing this, I was able to prevent distraction. So find your distraction, remove them so you can completely get into the mode of studying straight away. Number four, this is what I used to do and it really helps me. I use something called the Pomodoro technique. It's pretty simple. The, big, the most difficult part of studying is to actually start studying. The starting bit is the most difficult. So I came up across this thing called the Pomodoro Technique. I'll put a link in the description below for uh, a much more detailed video. What I would do is I would study for 20, I would start the timer, I would study for 25 minutes and I would focus on one specific thing for 25 minutes. And then I would take a five minute break. What this basically does is it basically tricks my mind telling me that I'm only gonna be studying for 25 minutes and that's it. 25 minutes studying and five minute break is like one set. Some people need to do two to three sets for them to actually start studying. Uh, for me, I found out that after I did one set, which was 25 minutes of studying and five minutes of break, I was completely in the zone. Like I did not need the, uh, the timer anymore. I would just continuously study without a break. 
and uh, that really helped me so that is something you should try and definitely maybe it'll help you as well okay so, so another thing that i did with the pomodoro technique was that i actually had a blank sheet next to me uh, with the title distractions so anything that would pop into my head that is not related to what i'm studying i would just write it down uh, sometimes i might think like you know what, what is the biggest blue whale in the world or um, or how how old were dinosaurs you know these kind of questions pop in your head when you're actually studying and sometimes you're very impulsive to go and look and then you would just distract yourself completely from studying so what i did was i just wrote down those questions while they came to me um, so and so that way i decided like if once i finish studying i'll go and look them up but the funny part was once i had finished studying 90% of the stuff that i had written down i didn't even want to look anymore so it was basically my brain playing tricks on me again not allowing me to study so definitely have a distraction sheet next to you write all the distractions that come to you and don't deviate from the topic that you're studying if it's important you can check it out later but i'm pretty sure as it happened to me it'll happen to you 90 percent of the stuff that you will write you aren't even interested number five this is highly important you cannot just sit down and study for hours and hours a day it is it's impossible what happens is your brain starts getting tired for me what i figured out is 50 minutes to 50 minutes study and 5 minute break is the best because after 50 minutes my brain kind of starts like getting distracted and I'm not completely focused. So what I would do is I would study for 50 minutes straight then I would take a 5 minute break and be sure it's only 5 minutes. Don't turn this 5 minutes into 10 minutes. So on this, in this 5 minutes do not watch TV, do not uh, go and start cooking, it's only 5 minutes. So the best thing to do is just get up, do some squats, do some light exercises, get the blood flowing around and uh, straighten your back, you know, otherwise your back, you mess up your posture by sitting down in that position. So it is very important to take breaks properly because uh, that really helps you to potentiate your studying. Otherwise, I've seen people who study, say that they study for like eight hours a day. And when you look at the amount of work that they've finished, they've only done work worth Two hours because the rest of the time they were too distracted and not completely focused so it's highly important to take breaks and study very efficiently during that time last but not the least hold a friend accountable now for me when i was in college i used to have a roommate who used to be really studious and he used to study so often and i used to do so many things and even though he never came to me directly and told me that you know dude like you aren't studying by looking at the amount of time he spent studying I used to kind of indirectly be influenced and be like oh I need to do more studying as well so in a way he kind of held me accountable so but if you have somebody like that or maybe you can ask your friend and hold him accountable so every anytime you start slacking he will actually tell you like hey dude listen like you need to get back to work and that's really great because sometimes you need that somebody else telling you that you know you're lacking so that, that way you can actually get back and focus so if you can get someone to hold you accountable that will be awesome so there we have it guys, those were some of the tips that I used in medical school that helped me overcome procrastination and, and I would really suggest you try them, maybe it will help you as well to become from a major procrastinator to possibly a minor procrastinator. We all are procrastinators at the end of the day. If you like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit the red subscribe button, share the video with one of your procrastinator friends, maybe this will help him as well, possibly. Comment in the comment section below and let me know if there's any questions that you have and I'll help you get them answered. So that was it guys, this is your boy Dr. Z signing off. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take it easy. Peace.